Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to talk about how I made this uh, stylized character, how I made this stylized head. As I promised you last time, I was gonna do the easy portion of how to create your own custom metahuman, which I showed in the previous video. Now in this video, we are gonna talk about a kind of like a harder way to do things is it's just we're gonna use uh, several different tools. Unfortunately, this process, it's not free. And by that, I mean, you're gonna need Maya. There's just no two ways around that. I'm also going to be uh, showcasing something in ZBrush, which is the tool that I like to use for sculpting and for creating my characters. However, for that portion, you can use Blender. You can use a Blender for sculpting and just do the metahuman to stylize transformation in there if you want to. Uh, but let me show you what it is. Now, the way to achieve this, the secret is from a YouTube channel called Arts and Spells. I'm going to leave a link in the description down below uh, for the playlist that shows you step by step how to do this. And like I said, it is in Maya. You are going to need to know how to use Maya and a little bit of technical skills, which I didn't have. I'm a 3D artist. I'm not a technical artist. And Maya has never been my daily driver. Now I am going to showcase a little bit of um, what the results that you can obtain with that tool. What does it look like in Maya and, and things that you are going to need for that to work. All right, here we are in Maya and I've already loaded my metahuman head, as you can see. This wasn't through Bridge. This is a completely different process that you will see on his channel. And again, he can explain it much better than I can. Uh, so there's a there's his playlist step by step in the description down below so you can follow it. Now, what I want to show you here is how it is possible because people sometimes are a little bit skeptical and uh, I'm just going to load in the head. I've already have it here in Maya. So if I shift H, this is the stylized head that you saw from the beginning of the video. And all I have to do is let me uh, set targets. You're going to see a UI similar to this. Uh, yours might be a little bit different because he just updated. I just haven't updated mine yet. So all you have to do is set targets. And then if you click here, this uh, button that says join transform, you're going to see what happens. And as you can see, we have our meta human head is now rigged. And once I've gone through the other two steps that he has for this, now you can see, let me put this away. Um, let me turn off the joints so you can see what's going on. And if we go to the MetaHuman control rig that's right here, you can see that it works. And let's do the jaw. You can see everything moves pretty nice. Very good. Now there is a, a couple of things about this though. These things that you see right here are the LOD eyelashes, which I usually don't use because I use LOD zero. That means I use the grooms. However, the grooms already have a binding for the metahuman head. So if you do a custom for the metahuman rig, these bindings may not apply and may look out of place. So you may have to do your own bindings, which is a whole different set of uh, processes. Now, I'm just deleting a couple things that I usually don't need, like the eye shells and all that. Now, depending on your head size and kind of like how much of a stylized character you have, you may have to do the eye portion or, or not. I've uh, done some custom characters where I don't have to do the eye portion if I happen to match them to what the uh, metahuman character has. I don't have to go through the eyes, but for this one, I had to go through the eyes steps. Now here we are in ZBrush, so I can show you the one of the things that you need to take into account whenever you're using this tool is the geometry of the head has to be the same of the metahuman. So what you're seeing on camera right now is a metahuman head. And you can see it's a metahuman head because it's all the way down here. 
Uh, but what you can do, and you can actually do this in Blender. I'm just used to ZBrush. Um, you can just bring whatever head you want to do here, or you can use this as a base mesh. If you're a 3D artist, you can sculpt your base from here and then just uh, bake the normals and bake all the detail from the high poly to the low poly. I actually did that, by the way. So this one right here is the head that I sculpted. And as you can see, they only matched in the kind of like in the bottom part. So I just masked the bottom part. So it was almost the same, uh, even though we're not going to use in the metahuman body. So that pretty much doesn't matter. But everything else I changed about it and I just moved vertices around. But this is one to one, the same geometry as the metahuman underneath. So you can see that if I go to metahuman, it still has these little triangles here, which are not triangles. They are actually uh, quads, but you know what I mean? So you can see this. These two are exactly the same geometry. Now you can have the geometry spread out however you want. So you can even do more stylized faces. But what you cannot do is change the geometry completely because that's going to break not only the process from what I understood, but it's also not going to allow you to use the blend shapes because the blend shapes are made on vertice order. So each little point right here that you see on his face, it's a vertice and that vertice has a numerical order. So if you change that, then this process not only is it not going to work, but the blend shapes, you'll have to pretty much build the blend shapes from scratch if you want to change your geometry thereby defeating the purpose of using this tool. But as you can see, I even changed the ear. The face is completely different. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about here is the mesh, how the mesh to metahuman works, because mesh to metahuman pretty much works the same way. What it does is it takes a base mesh of the metahuman and it kind of wraps it around whatever mesh you provided with. I actually did a test of using mesh to metahuman with a picture because from a picture you can do the tracking, but you cannot move forward. So it does the tracking. If you use mesh to metahuman with a picture, it does work all the way until the tracking because you can do the tracking from the picture. You just save the frame, which I thought was insane. But after that, it's not going to produce your any result. Actually, it, it just gives you an error message because it needs a mesh to to wrap around. So we are in a way doing the same thing as mesh to metahuman. However, the algorithm or whatever programming is running in the background that works with mesh to metahuman, it has a limit. So by doing this independently of mesh to metahuman, I'm overcoming that limit and I'm creating a mesh that is more to my liking, is more customized as opposed to uh, just using the metahuman creator. And if I go here, uh, let me just turn this one off. This is the mesh. And if I go to let's unwrap this uh, just so you guys can see about the texture. If we flatten this, you can see that this is exactly the same texture as a metahuman. If you've opened the textures of the metahuman face, this is 100% the face of the metahuman. So this is another reason why it's good to use this process is because let's say you don't want to do the texturing. So for this character in particular, I did the texturing for the face. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to use the metahuman textures, you actually can because it has exactly the same UVs uh, coordinates as the original metahuman. So though, that is the, the two advantages of using uh, processes like this. Now, that was using the um, Maya application. I have not customized the body that I'm using right now because this body was already rigged and I, I can just use the the what I've already have on my channel is just to you can watch the video that was previous before this one where I just attach the head to the body and it works just as well. This is a body that I had laying around and I think I'm going to use it for a quick short. However, I am building a body for this stylized head from scratch. It kind of looks more um, closer to the Overwatch art style, which is a style that I really love and I would love to make a short with that kind of art style. 
um, but that is going to be the final body. This one is a placeholder, and like I said, I'm just going to use it for a short. Um, one of the things, I, I don't know if, if you guys want to see me building a character on the channel, please leave it in the description down below. I'm going to pin a comment for that, uh, for you guys to tell me if you, if you want to watch that, because I do have videos on me making characters that that was before 2019, and those barely got me any views, so I'm not sure if my audience is interested in that. Some of my whole workflow from just making the character from scratch to the finished product where we're going to rig it with a metahuman and get it into Unreal. That is a, a, a step that I'm going to show you later on um, that regards to doing armor with a process like this. And um, I know it looks a little bit daunting. Once you watch the tutorial from Arts and Spells, you're gonna see what I mean. It, it looks a little bit complex. It's, it's not that terrible. It's just, it, it takes some getting used to because these are these are 3D Arts tools. These are industry standard tools. I know I may just trigger some people with that, but what we're doing is the way that is done in, in the industry, like if a professional studio were gonna do it. So I am gonna show a little bit of that later on, uh, just so you guys can see how that works. And um, yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks to my patron. My patrons are right here on screen. Uh, both level one and level two. If you want to help out the channel, there's a Patreon. If not, then leaving a like and leaving a comment for the YouTube algorithm goes a long way. You can follow me on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and um, yeah, subscribe to the channel, all that. I'll see you in the next one.